Good evening and uh, welcome to graduation 2020, the baccalaureate services. Uh, we are holding this here at uh, Dave Miller's church in Goodland, Indiana. So I wanted to just let you know a little bit about what was gonna go on tonight. Uh, Seth Bishop, he'll be coming up here before too long and he's gonna have an opening prayer for us. And then Kiara Battering, she's gonna sing a, a couple of songs for us tonight. And then Dave's gonna provide you a message tonight and after Dave gets done, then Seth will take and uh, come back in with the benediction prayer. So Rebel family, we welcome you tonight and we're glad that you're here. And on a side note, I wanted to, uh, to point out something about our speaker. I wanted to give a, a slight introduction about Dave. Most of you know Dave, but some of you don't. Uh, he coaches for us on cross country and helps out with uh, spring sports and, and track. But I wanna tell you that he's a very humble man and he's not in the room right now. So he is an extremely humble man, and, and I want to tell you why, and that's because back in 2015, when we uh, did our every first 15-minute program, uh, one of the parts of that program is, is that we needed some ministers, local ministers, to go out and do death notifications to families. And even though it was a staged or mock situation, it's very real to the people that are involved. So I asked Dave on, in 2015, I said, Dave, would you be interested in uh, going out and doing these death notifications, and he said yes. <clears throat> so he did, and if you've seen that every 15-minute program from 2015, uh, you would see him involved in, in working with people through that type of situation. And then Levi passed away, as, as most of you know, Levi passed away. And then it came time for the 2018 uh, every 15-minute program. So I kind of tossed and turned as to what I would take and, and do. Do you invite Dave to help us out again? was, the, uh, was the, the death of Levi tragic enough that, and I just didn't know what to do. So it just so happened that Dave was in school one day and brought him back to my office. And, and I said, Dave, we're gonna have the every 15 minute program again. Would you be interested in helping? And I understand if you wouldn't be interested, but I just, I wanted to ask you. And I'll never forget that he just kinda, he kinda just stood there for a moment. And you could see the wheels turning, you could see, probably thoughts going through his mind. But then here's how he answered, and that's the reason why he's a very humble man, because his answer was strictly this, it'll help kids, I'll do it. And I'll never forget that. Uh, Dave Miller, as humble as he is, was not thinking of himself, was not thinking of his family necessarily at that point in time, but he was thinking of kids in general because he knew that's what Levi would want him to do. And so Dave did help us with that program in 2018, and uh, he did get through that program. And I, I just have a lot of respect for Dave, and uh, being the humble man that he is, I just wanted to share that uh, about him tonight before he uh, has his message just a little bit later on. So uh, I welcome you tonight, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and move along with the service at this time, and, and thank you for uh, tuning in, so to speak, and we'll look forward to seeing you on graduation day. Thank you very much. Dear Heavenly Father, as we are being released from these halls of education, Lord, we pray for life. Guide us and direct us into the life that you have planned for us. Give us the courage to live life to the fullest and the wisdom to never compromise with evil and in doing, cheat ourselves of your best life for us. For those who are graduating, Father, we pray for happiness. We have so many dreams, plans, ambitions, and hopes. The whole world lies before us. Help us continue to learn and grow to find work and realize our place in the world. Comfort us when we stumble and pick us up should we fall. May we know love and mercy in your constant care. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, right. 
God's blessings to you guys, uh, South Newton class of 2020. I have a reading from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then another reading from St. John's Gospel, our Lord talking to his disciples in the upper room the night before his crucifixion. This is John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to, me, comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice, because I said, I am going to the Father. So far, two readings. I am in begging your indulgence here a little bit, but this is a hymn that we used this last Sunday, and I figured it makes a whole lot of sense as a... Uh, graduation themed him too. We're going a cappella, so you're just going to have to bear with me on this. Christ be my leader by night as by day, safe through the darkness, for he is the way. Gladly I follow my future, his care. Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there. Christ be my teacher in age as in youth, drifting or doubting, for he is the truth. Grant me to trust him, though shifting as sand. Doubt cannot daunt me, in Jesus I stand. Christ be my Savior, in calm as in strife. Death cannot hold me, for he is the life. Nor darkness, nor doubting, nor sin and its stain can touch my salvation with Jesus I reign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, first of all, a movie quote from one that you really need to see if you haven't. Just talking to Kiara, she has. In fact, I showed it to her several years ago, her and her little, little sister, Kalea. It's from way back in 1987. Uh, it's called The Princess Bride. If you haven't seen it, you really need to. 
Wesley, the, the male protagonist, also known as the Dread Pirate Robert, says at one point to Princess Buttercup, his true love, life is pain, Highness. Anyone who tells you differently is selling something. But Wesley, as correct as he is, he isn't entirely correct. Even in the midst of frustration and sorrow and pain and misery, you heard something amazing from St. Paul just a moment ago. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. To be sure right now, the fact that I am here and all I've got in front of me are two people, Seth being one of them, and you are watching on your computer or something like that, it speaks to the truth that there is from that line from the movie. It's just not fair. Life is pain. And you, dear South Newton class of 2020, have had perhaps an unusually heavy dose of that lesson. We have a hymn here at Trinity that, that talks about that in, in the first line. In the midst of earthly life, snares of death surround us. And thus, you are confronted each day with the COVID death counts in our state and in our country and around the world. And this business of death and the, the legitimate fear of passing death along has pretty much destroyed the last quarter of your high school career. But of course, you know why um, I'm up here. I, you might still have asked me had not that horrible thing happened three years ago, such that many of you were in the gym on a Tuesday evening and a Wednesday morning, maybe even squeezed in to this tiny building or in our fellowship hall and then out came out to a grave for your classmate. But you have been extremely gracious and you have still counted me as a dad for your class for these, these years. And lest I forget to mention it, you and your friends from, uh, from the other classes and so forth, everybody out there, especially you students, were an enormous support to me and my family during those days. And I thank God for you, and you are constantly in my prayers. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. You heard Jesus say to you a moment ago, but how can that actually be true? How can there be peace and even joy right now with all that you have suffered, all that you are suffering, all that you will suffer in this age? Life is pain. You have already been rather immersed in that reality and in your own personal and private ways too. And as you go on through this life, you will learn it more and more. Life is pain. Life in this age of sin and death is hard. It's a struggle. But it's almost always been this way. Listen to what our Lord says to Adam on the day when through him our race fell into sin and death. He says, in the sweat of your brow you will eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now, that's not your typical happy graduation stuff or congratulations, no, go out and conquer the world sort of a speech. It's, it's not the upbeat, you can do it, you can make the world a better place kind of a thing that graduates are supposed to hear. I am sorry to be such a downer. But even without the coronavirus, even without the funerals that you've already been to, even without everything that makes it seem so unfair for your class this year, you knew this. <laughs> there is pain and there is frustration and failure in life. Even little everyday sorts of things that aren't that hard to just brush off. You've learned this from the earliest days you can remember. You struck out in t-ball, maybe. How do you strike out in t-ball? I don't know. Your science fair project flopped. You wasted time and you didn't get the homework in by its due date and you wound up with a bad grade. You broke up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Pain and sorrow have come to you because of what others have done and because of your own failures and your own selfish choices. 
No, you've seen too much already to buy into that Pollyanna, go conquer the world stuff. To be sure, it is true. The real point of your life, what you do each day in this age, is not to make a lot of money and please yourself. That kind of thing comes and goes, and thank God when it comes, of course. But he created you in his image, and that means the point of your life is to live outside of yourself, to live for the real benefit of those around you, your family and your friends and your neighbors and your society and your whole world. In other words, the purpose of your life is to love, trusting that someone loves you perfectly already and will forever. And by that word love, I'm not referring to some sort of feeling, some sort of happiness which, with the people around you who very often will not, will most certainly not make you feel happy or loved, and you won't always make them feel that way either. Oftentimes, when you are being the most loving, they're not going to like it. No, love as it really is, is action. It is self-giving. It is laying down your life, your wants, your feelings, your self-fulfillment, whatever that is, for the other person. This is how the world was supposed to be, how we human beings, creatures of God, were supposed to live in his own image. For God, the Holy Trinity, is even from all eternity within himself the essence of love. But for us, his dearly beloved creatures, his chosen family, this is what it looks like. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Do you want to know what love is? Well, we have another hymn that has a stanza that goes like this. Inscribed upon the cross we see in shining letters, God is love. He bears our sins upon the tree. He brings us mercy from above. But there are two problems that we face in trying to do this real love thing. First, as hard as we try, as successful as we may actually turn out to be at it, at least to all our eyes and so forth, whatever we're trying to do to help and be a blessing to the people around us in the long run doesn't seem to do any lasting good. Things and people don't really get any better. Man's inhumanity of man, that famous saying, it continues apace or it even gets worse. Countless generations of graduates, despite all their best intentions and all their best efforts, have been discovering this all along. And then secondly, if you are brutally honest with yourself, as you are taught by the uncompromising law of God, you will know in your heart that is what is true for the world out there is true for you too. You don't love selflessly like this. That's what sin actually is. It is the self-separation from him who is love, such that we are curved back in upon ourselves, even at the best of moments. The British author C.S. Lewis put it like this in a poem. All this is flashy rhetoric about loving you. I've never had a selfless thought since I was born. I am mercenary and self-seeking through and through. I want God, you, all friends, merely to serve my turn. Peace, reassurance, pleasure are the goals I seek. I cannot crawl one inch outside my proper skin. I talk of love. A scholar's parrot may talk Greek, but self-imprisoned always end where I begin. All, we th all that we can do in the depths of our sinful hearts is think of our, ourselves. Levi was thinking only of himself that night three years ago. And as a side note, if any of you ever wants to ask me and talk to me about what happened, I am willing. There's no point in hiding the truth of it. Feel free to contact me if you do. But that was the truth for him, even as a Christian, even knowing what his life in Christ was supposed to be like. We are not love, and in our sinfulness, we do not love in God's image. But here's the source and the reason for peace and joy on this occasion and for every day of the rest of your lives, nevertheless. That does not change God. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he is still love. He is still pure, self-donating love, specifically in Jesus the Son, our true brother, crucified for the sin of the world, and now Jesus lives. Therefore, in spite of Levi's sin and death, this is what matters eternally. Jesus lives and Levi lives in him. That peace of God did indeed guard him in Christ Jesus. Now, does this forgiveness mean that what Levi did and what you and I do and the sinful selfishness of our hearts, well, it doesn't really matter. Not at all. It means that all of it, all of our sin and our death, that in the past, that in the present, that in the future, all of it is, is laid upon, is counted to Jesus instead of us, so that all of his pure and self-giving love is now counted by our Father as ours. There's a German phrase for this that is, uh, it's called the Freilicke Wechsel, which is simply translated the happy exchange, most certainly a happy exchange for us. He has declared it to be so, and thus it is. And then this is precisely the thing that frees us both to want to be truly loving and even by the word of Christ dwelling in us to begin to actually do it. So Paul puts it like this. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So you see, this is what Jesus meant when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He went to the cross to prepare our home in his Father's house. We really are God's family forever in Christ. This is the peace that passes understanding. Peace in the midst of confusion and frustration and sorrows and disappointments, and even in the face of death. The peace that comes from the cross of Christ, his love for us that covers our sin and gives us his own life now and forever. And in the end, that's why I want you not to feel sorry for Levi. <laughs> He's with our dear Jesus. He's not missing anything. It hurts for us. But that pain for this life, as true and real as it is, is only a passing shadow, and the day is coming that has no evening. And that's also why you can rejoice and have fun and celebrate your high school graduation however you need to do it, with whatever social distancing restrictions you gotta have, even though it's not happening the way that we imagined and wanted it. And do make your plans for what's next in your life, plans for living and for learning to live in service to everyone around you, even in the midst of this life of pain and uncertainty, because that will be your joy. Living outside of you is where there is joy, living in him who is joy and peace. There is one thing that is absolutely and eternally certain. It is Jesus' joy to give us peace and joy now and forever, precisely under the sign of his cross. Now, the word of God actually does and creates what it says, and therefore, by his word and even by his command, I am going to say to you, dear class of Anno Domini 2020, the last words your classmate ever heard from this pulpit. You really are safe in Christ's kingdom because for his own sake, you remain forgiven for all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And this peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for graciously bringing all these, your children, to this point in their formal education. 
For all the efforts of parents and teachers through these years, we praise you. We ask wisdom and guidance for them as they make decisions about their lives that will have implications for years to come. Give them a rich measure of your spirit as fields of study and opportunities for employment become available. Help them accurately to assess the gifts and the abilities that you have given and bless the choices that they make. May they ever grow closer to you in faith and with their lives honor the name of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And since this is a sort of an evening service, uh, I'll close with an evening prayer that I make all my catechism kids learn. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, grateful that our stories have brought us together to this place, some of us simply to the end of another year and others to the end of a chapter in our lives. As we are consumed in the coming days with this moment in our stories, Lord, we recognize that this is really your story. You alone are the author and creator of all things created and conducted for your glory. As we conclude this season of preparation and call all of us graduates toward charms and challenges that lie ahead, I call on you to strengthen us and give us peace. In Jesus' name, amen.